Hello YouTube and welcome to this little video in which I am going to talk about uh, this. This is the Ricoh uh, Theta S 360 degree camera. Uh, this is a fairly new product. Uh, it's been on the market for a bit. Uh, I never heard of it until um, the Mobile World Congress a couple of weeks ago when LG actually announced one of their friends of the new LG G5 would be a camera that looks a lot like this uh, coupled with their own brand of uh, head mounted display for virtual reality so I managed to talk my office manager into buying one of these for the office because I said it's gonna be great to use in various uh, marketing situations um, and uh, <laughs> I've been playing around with it uh, for the last week past week and I thought I'd just uh, give you a couple of thoughts about this camera in particular and uh, this 360 degree camera thing in general so here we go Alright, so this is the box which you get the Ricoh Theta S 360 camera in. Um, it isn't very big, but that's okay. Uh, it doesn't really say much on it. Ricoh Theta barcodes. Underneath you see the packaging is recyclable. It's made in China for the Ricoh company, Ricoh Imaging. All right. Great Britain, France, and Denmark. Okay, so, okay. Well, nothing much to see. Uh, it does say that it is black. So that's good. Right, let's open it up. And it looks like there should be something here, but. There isn't. Just packaging, I guess. And here we go. Uh -huh. All right, so here we have the camera. Looks kind of gray actually, but I guess that's black. Let's put that over here. And underneath we have uh, pouch to have the camera inside which is good I guess some documentation a micro USB to USB cable and that's it nothing more standard cable Documentation. Important message to customers. Handle the lens part with caution because it's made of glass. Store it in the included soft case when not using it. Charge the battery by connecting to a PC using supply PC cable. Do not use other cables, okay. Correct operation may not be possible when used in combination with a hub or other USB device. Good advice, and this is a pouch in which you should store your device unless you're using it. And it's kind of soft. And you can put the camera inside. fit actually there you go okay so that's cool let's take a look at the camera then uh -huh. contain stuff all right okay so I'm guessing that's the 
button. Can you see the button? No. There's a button uh, which you can press and I'm guessing that's the take a picture. Kind of hard to say which is front and which is back on this camera because it's obviously 360 degrees so it takes both back and front. Hmm. On the side here you have on off, you have Wi-Fi on off I guess and you have a switch between photo and video and on the bottom you have uh, there we go micro USB and HDMI and one of those things to put it on a tripod so that's good let's turn it on So it's nice and blue. Trying to connect the Wi Fi. See if we can switch to video. Yep. So that works as expected. And if I take a picture, it makes a noise. Okay. Cool. Let's see what we can do with this one. There we go. Oh, put it in the pouch. Careful with the lens. And that's the unboxing. Some specifications. Uh, this is a camera, obviously. Uh, and it has two lenses. So if you can see this circular thing up here, it has one of those on both sides. And that is a fisheye lens. Actually, it's two fisheye lenses, which are ridiculously wide. And together they capture a 360 degree photo of everything in kind of a sphere around the camera. So uh, you basically you walk into a room and you take one picture and you have the whole room, including yourself, which is kind of annoying, uh, but still. So these two lenses are 12 megapixel lenses each. Because of processing and overlapping and stuff like that, uh, you actually don't get a 24 megapixel image, which you might expect when you have two 12 megapixel uh, lenses. Instead you get kind of 14 megapixels, 14 point something something uh, so that's what you have you it is technically two 12 megapixel lenses but it is in reality one 360 degree um, 14 megapixel lens it is according to rico pretty light sensitive they say it's uh, f over two which is a pretty quick lens. Uh, in my experience, it's not that brilliant in, in low light, but all right, maybe uh, I've had a bad, <laughs> bad experience just uh, trying it out. Uh, it is kind of heavy, actually. It, I mean, it's, it's small, as you can see, my hands are pretty big, but still, it is kind of small. Uh, but it weighs quite a bit. It's got eight gigabytes of memory included and you can't actually replace it. There's no SD card or anything. It's got eight gigs and that's it. Uh, it does take a lot of photos <laughs> in those eight gigs though. So uh, I've been you know, running around and taking photos uh, and I haven't haven't had any problems. The surface is well, it's plastic, but it's kind of rubberized feel to it. So it's it's nice and grippy. You don't feel like you're gonna lose it very easily. The edges here kind of look like and feel like metal. 
uh, I'm not sure but it could be metal and the threading on the uh, adapter for, for putting on a tripod is looks like metal as well it is a very simple interface I mean on this side basically you only have the button to, to take a picture uh, on the side here you have the on off switch you have the Wi-Fi on off and you have switch between taking photos and uh, taking video and that's it really you can sync this with uh, an app for your phone from Rico Theta S app uh, this uses a uh, Wi-Fi so this is basically uh, uh, a hotspot and uh, on the bottom here you can see the the name of the um, hotspot for your particular Theta S camera and also for the default password uh, but you can change the password so otherwise anyone who found your camera can can connect to it at any time uh, thing is though doing that you get a bit more option you can uh, do priority for uh, shutter speed you can light the image up a bit stuff like that and and you do need to be able to play with those kind of settings in my experience because it's i mean it's it's trying to do uh, when you have automatic exposure it's trying to do automatic exposure for the whole 360 degrees and it, like today when i was out taking photos you do get you know a lot of light on top of the picture here and then usually you get kind of dark uh, on the bottom because the ground is darker than the sky uh, and uh, tricky lighting situation so you really have to tell the device what to prioritize if you're gonna um, I'm the, I'm, I don't mind if the sky is uh, white out because I want details in the ground or the other way around I don't mind if this ground looks dark I want details in the light areas uh, so you really do need to have a, a, a smartphone when you're taking photos with this uh, the Wi-Fi connection that you get with your smartphone is surprisingly slow actually uh, one photo is only a couple of megabytes in size it still takes you know time to to transfer that it doesn't take a lot of time but a couple of seconds uh, so I'm guessing that the Wi-Fi is probably um, a <laughs> HO 2.11a or whatever it is so maybe 10 megabits uh, Wi-Fi it is a bit quicker if you connect it and transfer files using the cable uh, and as you saw in the unboxing video you should really use the included cable but I can confidently tell you that it does work with other cables as well it also works charging it with the normal phone charger uh, I've tried that as well uh, I haven't tried the HDMI output yet. I am not sure how that will work. Uh, taking photos with this is very easy. You turn it on and you can see here that it's on. I uh, got Wi-Fi on. I'm going to turn that off for now. There you go. So it's the power on and you got in camera mode photo mode and then here you also see power on light and then you just hold it up like this and go smile to the camera it makes a noise and takes a photo and that's it really I find when I try to experiment with this and walk around and take pictures you oh, I only really take one photo where I would perhaps normally take several photos different angles you know trying to get the right composition uh, and you don't really need to do that when you have a 360 degree camera uh, simply because well you got all the angles immediately and uh, you can move around a bit and it's not gonna change much uh, of the photo that you get you get everything that you can see from where I'm standing right now 
Uh, and I can, of course, if something is obstructed by, by a building or something, maybe I would walk around that building and do something like that. But it doesn't really change much. So, especially if you're indoors, <laughs> you just kind of you know, take the photo and then you're done. So, I was a bit disappointed with the 8 gigs of storage at first, but maybe that's not a big problem because you're not going to take so many photos. Uh, for video, it's kind of the same thing, really. Uh, I haven't really tried making videos because it's kind of hard. Uh, I tried to take a video while I'm walking around and when you're watching it, it is weird. Uh, I also tried taking video, but you know, keeping still and, and let things happen around me. And it's not very action packed. Um, I saw last night actually there was the uh, final Swedish qualifier for the Eurovision Song Contest 2016. And if you don't know what the Eurovision Song Contest is, you really should Google it because it is a terrific experience. The thing is that the final was actually streaming live in 360 degree video. So you could go into this app on your tablet or your phone and you can... It was kind of like having pretty bad seats <laughs> in the in the theater there because, you know, you're sitting down at the edge of the stage and looking up and you could look around and you could see a lot of, you know, theater. Uh, and not very much of the stage so but but it, the theme point is it was very cool that they had included that in the uh, in the uh, performance in the transmission uh, and you can kind of do the same thing with this so if you film stuff uh, it kind of looks boring or, or not very interesting or, or, you know, I think maybe it's because to to really get a good video 360 degrees, you have to plan it to have that kind of video. So you have to actually have that kind of thing happening where it makes sense to be putting someone in the middle of it and, and filming. Uh, otherwise, it's, you know it's not very interesting to watch it's better to watch the uh, it was better to watch the the actual feed of yesterday's competition uh, because then you the producer could you know select the angles that made things look cool uh, instead of just I'm sitting here and I'm looking around and all the interesting bits is over there and then I can actually turn my head and look at stuff which is not very interesting uh, so yeah okay that's the camera uh, I haven't actually been able to uh, run the battery dry yet uh, but that might also be because every time I wanted to use it I made sure that it's fully charged also as I said uh, you don't really or I don't really take a lot of photos when I use this uh, it turns out that I just I go somewhere and I take a photo and then I move on. Question is, should you get one of these? Well, this one, the uh, Rico Theta S, uh, seems to be the best one for an affordable price on the market at the moment. Uh, 360 camera series. There are a couple of other, you know, variants. There's a cheaper version of this, uh, which lower resolution and no Wi-Fi and stuff like that. There's also uh, some other stuff from other manufacturers, but uh, they don't actually get the whole 360 degree. And then, of course, we have the new LG thing that is due out this summer. But right now, this seems to be your best bet. It seems to be priced around 350 US dollars in the US. Uh, here in Sweden it's about three and a half Swedish, three and a half thousand Swedish kroner, which is why I got my 
boss to pay for it, so I didn't have to buy it myself. Uh, and is it worth that kind of money? Well, thing is, as with all new things, <laughs> uh, it's kind of rough around the edges right now. Uh, I can certainly see potential for this uh, in the future, but it needs to be a lot better, basically. Because I can imagine going places on vacation and, and taking, you know, one of those photos like that. And then when I get home, I can kind of look at everything that was there. Uh, and usually when I'm traveling, I'm struggling to find those angles, the photos, the framing that will actually kind of convey the feeling of being there. Uh, and it's really hard and I'm not very good at taking photos. So it's really hard and I never quite get it. Uh, sometimes by pure luck and chance, I do get uh, nice photos, but I take a lot of photos when I'm traveling. And I spend most of the time actually taking photos instead of looking at the vistas. This could very well be the solution to that. Because, you know, ooh, this is a very nice spot. I'm standing here and I'm seeing it and it looks nice. I can just take one picture like that. And I would kind of have that view that I had. Plus a lot of other things around me, actually. Uh, problem is sharing this with others when you get home. Uh, you can load it up uh, in an app on your phone or on your tablet, uh, and you can kind of, you know, move it around and see up and down and around and down uh, to see uh, everything that was in this video sphere, photo sphere. Uh, when you took it you will also you will not see the camera they magically remove the camera from the photos and the videos but you will see your hand so you kind of have this giant hand in all the frames <laughs> looking like this uh, which is it's not a big problem but yeah and also of course you will also see yourself which is slightly annoying uh, but uh, you know I can live with that Couple of things though, because it is kind of hard to share. You can't really print it out, obviously, because then it would look, look like a weird panoramic view uh, where you have everything 360 degrees, left, right, up, down, stretched out, uh, and it looks kind of strange. Um, you really need to have a tablet or phone to uh, to view it and you can probably project it onto a big screen TV uh, and, and you know use your finger on the tablet to, to look around to share it but the thing with this is that these images and these videos really only come alive when you view them in something like this and this is a uh, head mount display or head mount holder for for a uh, mobile phone actually so you can put your phone in here this slot here and uh, it's got power lenses in there and it's adjustable in all kinds of ways so you can view it and then you put this on like so it makes you look like a dork, but it is very effective because then you can take the photo or video from this. You have to actually process it because uh, by default, and I haven't figured out if I can change it yet, but it, it saves the file as two spherical uh, images like this. And then you have to restructure that into a, a flat, uh, square uh, to be able to view it in most apps and uh, on YouTube but you know uh, Rico has an app or program for that so you can just 
download that uh, software onto your computer and you can do that. And you can also upload these movies uh, that you take to YouTube, which I've done. Uh, see if I can put a link in the description. Uh, and once you've done that, you can put it in this and you can put it on. And then it really goes from being cool. You know, you can look around on your tablet, but if you have it like this on your eyes, before your eyes, it really becomes seriously awesome uh, and and you can start to view things as if you were there and even though I know <laughs> it's just this and it's just a photo uh, it is so incredibly easy to you know reach out and try to touch things or, or take a step to get a better look at something and you obviously since you are not in the photo really, you are standing in a room and there might be a table right next to you. Uh, uh, I actually bumped into quite a few things uh, this past week while trying this out. It is very, very good. And it is very, very good even though we have a couple of problems. First problem is the resolution as i said the effective resolution is 14 megapixels for per image which may sound like quite a lot uh, for for normal use but it isn't because usually you get like 14 megapixels 12 megapixels even for you know that kind of frame but now you get 14 megapixels for everything and everything around you in 360 degrees is also got fixed uh, focal length so everything is in focus all the time the images tend to get blurry very very quickly if you have a small setting a small room uh, which you are in uh, then it's okay but if you're outside, especially like today, uh, the very grey day today, spring day, lovely spring day in uh, Gothenburg in Sweden, uh, overcast and grey, and it really gets very grainy very quickly. So you, you can't actually see that much. And to make this truly great, you would want to have a lot more, lot higher resolution. So all those nice landscapes and, and things, you know, going into buildings and taking photos inside of the St. Paul's Cathedral or whatever. Um, it's got such a potential, but to reach that potential, they really need to work a lot on the resolution. And also, you have to, they have to work a lot on the delivery system. Uh, this one from Humidu. Uh, is just a headset that I got for I don't know 500 Swedish krona that would be like 50 US dollars it really only is a glorified Google Cardboard so you can get a Google Cardboard which is a lot cheaper this one is plastic a bit more robust and you've got these straps so you can strap it on to look really stupid uh, but still you need a mobile phone to view it and I use my Sony Xperia Z3 phone, which has a full HD 5.1 inch display. Which, you know, that's not a brilliant resolution, but it is uh, pretty good. And it's not good enough. It really isn't high resolution enough. Because you, you, you only get half of that per eye, obviously. and not even that really because you're looking like this you have you don't really see watching the stuff at the edges you're watching the stuff in the middle uh, and the resolution there is just too low uh, and you also get because uh, this will magnify using these lenses in here uh, you see every every pixel <laughs> very clearly uh, so you need a better delivery system, you need a higher resolution, uh, you also need 
to have more control that, than you have over this because it's a bit of a fiddle with getting out your phone and standing with your phone and going, oh, this lighting this up and shutter priority or whatever, and then take the picture. You want to be able to do that on the camera itself. So those are two things that needs to be fixed. The third problem that you have uh, with this is the social aspects of uh, sharing your photos because uh, you can obviously uh, view it in the app on the tablet, uh, but then it looks kind of weird. You can beam the picture from the app to the TV, but it also looks kind of weird. So you want to have these kind of things when you're sharing your videos. But even if you have good resolution in these, uh, so you don't you know, see all the pixels, it's not very social because basically you have one guy sitting with this on, going like this. And while that might be entertaining for everyone else to see you can't really share the experience so there needs to be uh, new kind of apps that allows you to beam uh, the image uh, to to multiple of these and preferably not with you know with your phone inside but uh, more of a uh, with built-in screens uh, and then so basically you can be several people looking at the same thing simultaneously and also I think it would be good if you had kind of that kind of thing to also see the other people that you're watching the scene with in the photo so kind of some kind of virtual avatar thing uh, that would be good and I think we might actually see that kind of thing because just around the corner uh, we have the release of the oculus rift the htc vive and also the uh, playstation vr and when those things come out they are looking quite expensive at the moment and they all need cables uh, which is a bummer but why once those get out and uh, and people start buying them they will improve and they will get cheaper and and then if you have one of these you're gonna be the king of the party because then you can take the photos and the videos and you can share in them and people can go this is really really cool and until you know the prices come down and you can actually do that having one of these is not a bad idea uh, it is it's kind of like when 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 uh, you know the first digital cameras or even the first uh, mobile phone cameras that were crap and you took photos with them anyway and you shared them with everyone because that was cool it's kind of like that um, it's not very good at the moment but if people like me and perhaps people like you watching this video uh, who are probably early adopters buy these things take the photos make the manufacturers believe that uh, this is the next big thing and uh, they will develop and they will be great and it will be really really cool and where will this go in the future well in George Orwell's 1984, they had these rooms uh, called video wall things where you can project, you know, scenes on, on, on the walls. Uh, I always felt that that, you know, kind of pointless to have a room where you had video on all four walls uh, on, the, on the ceiling and the floor. Because where, where would you sit, <laughs> you know, you, you have to be standing up uh, basically and people are lazy. So I think this might actually be a better option having one of these, a smaller one of these, uh, lightweight, better resolution, but basically something that you just wear and then you can sit on your sofa and uh, you can be in this virtual reality world watching videos and and, and photos of 
yourself and your friends being on vacation and you can virtually do this virtually uh, together in, in this virtual reality thing. Uh, I think that would be easier and cheaper than actually building a room uh, where you can do it uh, without the glasses. So, cool. Should you get one of these? Well, as I said, uh, you really need to, because otherwise it will not be a thing and we won't see this bright, shiny future that I, I believe these things can actually do, give us. Uh, it's not mature technology yet. It is kind of magic to me still how they managed to get these pictures uh, without a camera inside and, and you know stitching it together to this video sphere uh, but it is not mature uh, it leads a lot of work both with the camera uh, with the quality of the image the resolution the uh, you know settings being able to control it more and also uh, with the viewing uh, the delivery system that also needs to improve a lot but in order for it to do that uh, we really need to buy these things to show that this is cool develop it and more people will buy it so yeah you should buy this thing it may not be exactly what you wanted right now but by buying it you will ensure that uh, there is a bright future so thank you very much for watching uh, do like my video and you know, leave comments below and everything and um, have a good day.